Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back! You may remember me from the PTB 0.13.1 release screencast a while ago, and I'm pleased to tell you that many things have been proved since then. Today's demonstration will recap the major improvements that occurred between version 0.13.1 and 0.15. The first thing you will notice when starting PTV now is the welcome dialog. This dialog was designed to not get in your way, but rather make you more efficient. For example, it allows you to open your recently used projects with only two clicks. It also allows you to access our topic-oriented user manual, in which many design decisions are explained. This user manual is also available directly on the PTV website. For now, let's load an existing project I made. Not only does PTV now show a progress bar while loading project clips, the performance has been improved in many areas to make the user interface more responsive. Projects load three times faster, deleting multiple clips is now instantaneous, video thumbnails are generated more quickly, and the playhead seeks seven times faster. You may notice that the media library now has a different look. Indeed, it now shows up as an icon view by default, allows searching in real time, and allows cleaning up your project by removing unused clips. The menus also have been reorganized to make your workflow easier to understand. For those among you who use multiple screens, you can now detach the various parts of the user interface, including the previewer. You may have noticed that the two zoom buttons have been replaced by a single slider near the ruler. This is much more efficient because the slider not only provides you with a sense of scale, but you can also use the mouse wheel with it. You can even warp instantly from any zoom level to another in just one click of the mouse wheel. For example, if I want to zoom to the maximum, I can click my mouse wheel to jump directly to that zoom level. You can also click the zoom button near the slider to fit the view to the length of the entire project timeline. Splitting clips is now modeless which means that you do not have to activate a particular tool before doing the split action. This change was accompanied with significant changes to how the playhead and the clip selections behave. For example, clicking anywhere in the timeline moves the playhead. At the same time, clicking on any clips selects it. Clicking on a blank area deselects any selected clip. This is important, because splitting occurs where the playhead is currently located, and only the selected clips under the playhead will be split. If no clips are selected, all the clips under the playhead will be split. Combined with zooming, frame-by-frame -frame seeking with the keyboard or scrubbing, modeless splitting is not only fast and efficient, it is also very accurate. Another great feature is the ability to set keyframes to control an audio clip's volume or a video clip's opacity. To add a keyframe, double-click on the red keyframe curve. You can then drag this keyframe around to adjust it. To delete a keyframe, just double-click it again. So let's say that I want to gradually fade out the sound of that clip. I can simply add a keyframe where I want the fade to start and drag down the last keyframe to 0%. The same concept applies to images for controlling their opacity. If you actually want to make a transition between two clips, such as a crossfade, there's a much easier and efficient way to do that, without even needing to use layers. PTV uses a single layer workflow for dealing with transitions. Simply drag one clip to overlap on another clip on the same layer, and the overlapping part becomes a transition. Other features have been added, 
such as the ripple and roll editing, which allow automatically filling the gaps as you move or trim the clips. For example, let's say I have two clips next to each other and want to trim the end of the first clip. Instead of trimming and then moving, I can do it all in one single operation by holding the shift key while I trim my clip. Likewise, I can hold the control key while trimming to do a rolling edit. A major feature of recent releases is the ability to add effects and transformations to your clips. For this demo, we will be applying a chroma key to remove the green screen behind Mr. Clinton. And then, using clip transformation tools, we will resize and reposition the clip onto a new background. First, let's insert the clips in the timeline. Then, let's lower the opacity of the foreground clip just a little bit. This is currently required for compositing the tool work properly, but this should be fixed in future releases. Now, let's add the chroma key to the foreground clip. To do so, use the alpha effect and tweak the settings so that the green gets removed from the picture. Now, let's adjust the size and position of the clip so that it fits better in the background. To do so, use the transformation feature in the clip properties. There we go! The project settings, preferences and rendering dialogues have been redesigned to make it easy to create and use presets, use custom aspect ratios or custom frame rates, and to make the relationship between project settings and rendering easier to understand. For example, if I take a look at my project settings, I can see that it is at 720p project, that is, at 1280x720 resolution with a square pixel aspect ratio. Now, what if I want to do just a quick render to preview my work? In the new rendering dialog, I can tell PTV to scale the video to 25% and render faster that way. As you can see, PTV 0.15 allows you to do simple edits quickly and effortlessly. I hope you've enjoyed today's demo. For more information, visit our website, come have a chat with us on IRC, and feel free to contribute to the project.